One of RetroArch's excellent features is the ability to use shaders as a means of enhancing the visual appearance of games and other content. In this guide, we dive into the details of what RetroArch shaders are and how to use them. In RetroArch, shaders can be applied to provide various visual effects such as colour saturation, adding scanline effects or simulating a specific type of display. Perfect for retro fans who want to recreate either the glow of their old CRT TVs or perhaps the pixelated dot matrix look of the Game Boy. RetroArch supports three shader languages, GLSL, Slang and CG. Although CG has now been deprecated due to it not being compatible with the more recent graphics APIs. The two actively supported shader types at the moment are as follows. GLSL. This is the shader format available to the OpenGL API and is accessible across a range of platforms including mobile devices. And Slang. This is the latest shader format for RetroArch and is compatible with more recent graphics APIs such as Vulkan, Direct3D 10-12 and OpenGL. Whatever it is you're looking to recreate, RetroArch is likely to have you covered with a wide range of shaders available for most situations. So how do you enable and disable shaders? It's very easy to enable shaders in RetroArch. Simply launch a game, press F1 or the hotkey assigned to go back to the RetroArch quick menu, then scroll down the menu and select shaders. Select video shaders so they're switched on and then select load and either access the GLSL or slang shader folder. You'll then see a large list of folders all with descriptions of the shaders available. For example, there are anti-aliasing, CRT effects, scanline, VHS effects and many different types of shader effects for you to experiment with. To disable shaders, simply go back to the shaders menu and switch video shaders to off again. If you are missing the RetroArch shader files from your RetroArch installation or simply wish to update your files to the latest versions available, you can do this by going to the online updater option in the main menu and then selecting update slang or GLSL shaders. This will then download and update your shader files in RetroArch. You should see the option to update either Slang or GLSL shaders depending on which video driver you have RetroArch set to utilise. To check which video driver you've selected, go to Settings, Video and then Output in RetroArch and select the appropriate driver for your system. Do note that if you have the GL driver selected, you will only see the option to update GLSL shaders. So what about shader customization? You can customise shader presets by modifying the values found in the shader parameters section, as well as adding multiple shader passes, combining multiple shaders to create your own custom effects. Each shader you use has its own parameters that can be adjusted. For example, a VHS effect shader has a wiggle value that can be adjusted. This makes part of the screen wiggle around like distortion from a worn VHS tape. Parameters of this nature can be found under the shader parameters section. Another feature in the shader section is that you can apply multiple shader passes, so if you want to combine a blurred VHS shader with a scanline shader to create an authentic blurry kind of CRT VHS look, then simply increase the number of shader passes in the shaders menu and add additional shaders into each new slot created. You can create some really weird and wonderful effects by experimenting with different combinations of shaders. Check out this example of a VHS videotape effect with scanlines. It looks almost identical to an old CRT playing back an old recording of my master system. Here are a few other great examples of shaders in RetroArch. First of all a CRT shader. The Mega Bezel Reflection Shader Package is one of the best regarded CRT style shaders available for RetroArch. Not only is the CRT effect excellent, but the reflections generated by the shader are also top quality. This shader package can be downloaded from within RetroArch by running the Update Slang Shaders option found within the Online Updater menu. They will then be downloaded to a folder called Bezel within the Slang Shaders folder. For fans of the Game Boy Advance who are looking for an authentic looking shader which recreates the washed out screen and motion blur, believe it or not some people do want this authenticity, then look no further than the AGB001 GBA Color Motion Blur Slang Shader. Whilst not to everyone's taste, you have to admit it looks fairly authentic to the original GBA screen. This shader gets downloaded when you update the slang shaders and can be found in the handheld folder of your slang shaders. Going back even further in the Game Boy's life, let's take a look at the shader that replicates the original monochrome green screen Game Boy. There are loads of great presets to play around with, which is loads of fun. You'll likely find yourself messing around with shader settings instead of actually playing the games. Shaders for me are an integral part of RetroArch and really help deliver that extra bump of nostalgia. 
Let me know in the comments if you've got any shader recommendations and which ones are your favourites. If you're after more RetroArch and emulation tips, explore the channel further and also check out howtoretro.com for more useful guides. As ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.